Now I want to start looking at the average excess of fitness issue. So here we've got our terms. We've got omega and omega is going to equal fitness. In general, omega of a particular genotype is going to be omega of that genotype. So if we're talking about a two allele system with A1 and A1, we might call this 1,1 one, one for A1 and A1. So we're going to just set this as the fitness of A1, A1 individuals on average. So looking at this fitness number, this is going to be examining the increase or decrease in the number of these A1, A1 genotypes over time. So if this fitness is 1, there's going to be no change in the number of those individuals. Since we're thinking about frequencies, we're generally going to be setting our fitness as relative fitness. And for relative fitness, we set the highest fitness to 1 and divide everything else by the highest fitness. Sorry about my crazy handwriting. It was looking better earlier. So the bigger your fitness number, the more fit you are more fit. So the purpose for, ca for calculating the average excess of fitness is to see how this fitness relates to the actual changes in allele frequencies over time and especially the changes in genotypes over time. So if we want to look to see how many more A1 alleles we're going to see over time, then we need to figure out the average excess of fitness and we need to calculate delta P. So we know that delta P is going to be P times the average excess of fitness for whatever allele we're looking at divided by the average fitness for the population. So I want to explore a little bit where this equation is coming from in this little video here. So first of all, we're going to start out looking at the frequency of each genotype at time equals 1. And then I want to look at the allele frequency at time equals 1. And this allele frequency is going to be what we get from delta P.